Living on the land uh, contributed to my cultural identity because I could link myself to elements of the land and that specifically contributes to my identity. I am a curator here at the Canadian Museum of Civilization responsible for Eastern Maritime Ethnology. I am driven by uh, my ancestors. I, I feel that their spirits are the ones that are driving me. I am their eyes, I am their ears, I am their mind, and, and they're guiding me. My career high point, uh, I believe, is, is the, my career here in the Canadian Museum of Civilization. That's about my, my highest point uh, of pride, I guess, is to be able to represent my people, the Mi'kmaq, uh, as a hereditary chief, uh, captain on the Mi'kmaq Grand Council, and a member of the Elsie Buktuk uh, Band, First Nations community. We take the land and we just envelope it around us, and this is our identity. We belong to the land and not the other way around, that the land doesn't belong to us. I'd always loved the pool. Uh, I remember growing up, uh, my grandparents and my aunt and uncle had a pool, so you know, every minute in the summer I was always there. And so I think just the you know, next natural step was uh, competitive swimming. Swimming is a very humbling sport. You put a lot of hours into it, and uh, I guess my biggest um, challenge has been just overcoming obstacles. And for instance, I guess the biggest one would be the 2000 Olympic trials, where I missed the team by three tenths of a second, which is about the length of a fingernail. One of the coolest things about going to the Olympics was just the fact that it's not something you can buy. And once you're there, uh, you're an Olympian for life. You know, I come from a town of 15,000 people and I started swimming in a, uh, a five lane, 25 yard pool. Even though if, you know, you may grow up in something with really, really small population, maybe not the best facilities or best resources that you can still achieve, you know, go to the greatest things in the world like the Olympics. If there's something that you want in life, whether it's sport or, or anything, then just, if you want it bad enough, then you should put in the hard work that, you, that needs to go with it. And by doing that and just, uh, you know, staying true to yourself and, and your goals, then uh, it, it'll happen for you. My upbringing was such that my father, for instance, he would walk uh, 100 miles to go and find work. Like if he wanted to do something, he did it. And I think that's the same kind of determination I have. The Dudley George case, which dealt with the Iprawash Provincial Park, where the people tried to protect their uh, sacred uh, burial grounds, and the Liu Lishan's case, which was the case of the uh, white supremacist shooting uh, Mr. Lashans because he was Indian. They both affected me because you saw how Indian people, Aboriginal people, could be mistreated because of hatred and because of racism and because of lack and respect for their Aboriginal and treaty rights. And that affected me to try to get justice for the families that were uh, most affected and for the people and for Canada in order to, uh, to prevent that type of thing happening in the future to other families and communities. I think the next generation can specialize much more that, than I did and build on what was started and continue improving the lives of uh, Aboriginal people, uh, their ability to survive in Canada.